Your son is a geek. What are you talking about? He's a normal kid. Help me out here. Do something. You want me to be more proactive? Yes, exactly. This is Ryan O. Broadcasting live from Stuckyville High. Do you know anything about Ryan Knoll's dad? Nothing really. I think he's a fireman. Really? Oh my God, you like him, don't you? Thanks again, Molly. Oh, hey, Frankie. Hey, listen, I want you to meet someone. This is my friend, Kyle Vesey. Frankie Hector. It's nice to meet you. You too. So what was Ed like in high school? Why do you ask? Just curious, I guess. This is going to be good. You're damn right it is. You're about to taste your first real hot dog. Not the hot dog. This. Hey, Frankie, I'm making soup for lunch. It smells good. Yeah. Oh, but Ed? Yeah. That's not soup, that's stew. What? You got stew there. You're looking at a pot of stew. I'm, I'm not doing it right? No, no, you're doing it great, provided you want stew. I want stew, I want soup. Well, that's too bad, because you got stew. It looks like soup to me. It's stew. Well, how do I get soup? You got to add more water. I got... Still stew. What the... Stew. 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 Stew! Where would I be without you? Eating stew. <laughs> you lie! Hey! What's up? Right on time, as always. Hey, Ed, man, did you hear what happened over at Baby Charlie's restaurant the other night? Yeah, yeah, that guy got killed. Yo, that was my friend, Jeff Dyer, man. Really? Eli, I'm so sorry. Ed, I need a favor. Yeah, sure. You need to take some time off? When Jeff had the accident, my other friend Danny was with him, and now he's in trouble. What kind of trouble? Police think maybe it wasn't an accident. They want to question him. I told him I'd get him a lawyer. Uh. Yeah, Eli, look, I, I don't know. I mean, I've never actually been involved in a murder case. Your friend should probably get a lawyer with more experience. Ed, I've known this guy my whole life. Please, man. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, I'll go talk to him. Come on, Frank. Eli. Hey, yo, D, what's up, bro? It's good, man. I don't know. I mean, you know, I still can't believe he's up. Uh... Man, what a stupid way to die. How could I let him... D, don't do that to yourself, man. It was an accident. It's not your fault. Yeah. Kill that. Now, look, these are the lawyers I told you about. This is Ed Stevens, and this is Frankie Heck. Hey. Hi. Thanks for coming down. Eli says you guys are the best. Well, he has to. I signed his paycheck. We'll certainly do everything we can to help you through this. Am I in trouble? Yeah, Danny, honestly, it's too early to tell. We still don't know what the police think happened. An accident is what happened. Then all you have to do is tell the truth. Ed and I will be here to take care of you. That's right. Mr. Martin, I'm Detective Henderson. Could you come with me? Come on, let's get this over with. Hey, buddy. Buddy? Yeah, we're buddies. Yeah, but we never call each other buddy. Well, guys call each other buddies, so I figured we could call each other buddy. Unless, of course, you prefer pal. Why do I feel like I'm in a reject episode of Seinfeld right now? Okay, so I was thinking about bringing Ryan's dad some chili down to the firehouse. Really? <laughs> okay, that's a long time to spend on one word. But why would you bring Sean Noel chili? Because he's a fireman. The firemen love chili. I see. Yeah! Someone's got a crow. Someone's got a crow. Okay, I do know that. Yes, you do. Okay, I do. You put it over on that one fast. Yeah, you know, I like having crushes. They really break up the day. What kind of chili are you making? Three alarms. We're not four alarms. Two forward. We had a Charlie dog, some fries, and a couple beers. How many are a couple? Did you tell the truth? Three for me, four for Jeff. Were you drunk? A little bit, yeah. Then what? We went outside, you know, by the uh, big Baby Charlie statue, and Jeff said, let's climb it, for old time's sake. What do you mean? 
We used to do it back in high school. Anyway, the next thing I knew, there he was up on baby Charlie's head. Then what? He shimmied out onto the arm. Which arm? The one that sticks out, holding up the big Charlie dog. And then? I yelled out to him, you know, get off of there, you jackass. You're gonna... And then the whole thing just tipped over and crashed to the ground. Anything else, Detective? No, that's all for now. Sorry for your loss, Mr. Martin. Thank you. But I wouldn't plan on leaving town for a couple of weeks. Detective, this is just a tragic accident. There's no reason to think otherwise. Thank you, Mr. Stevens. Good day. Molly, Sean Noll is here to see you. Send him in. Am I catching you at a bad time? No, no, not at all. I'm just sitting here, principaling. Oh, have a seat. I need your help. Ryan? Yeah. Uh, he's not being bullied again, is he? Because I haven't seen anything. Oh, no, no, no. Everything's been great on that front, thanks to you. Oh, well, what's wrong? Well, it's me and him. You know, ever since Ryan's mother died, we haven't, I don't know, uh, been connecting very well. What's the problem? The problem is we don't have anything in common, you know? We're different kinds of guys. What do you mean by that? All right. My idea of a good time. Have a couple of beers with the guys. Watch ESPN. Ryan's idea of a good time is... You know, I don't know what his idea of a good time is. I mean, he spends all his free time up in his room with his computer. So you prefer he drink a beer and watch ESPN with you? I just want us to be friends. Well, have you tried? Oh, yeah. I invited him to the firehouse like a thousand times. He has no interest. What kid doesn't want to ride on a big fire truck? Kid? Come on, what human doesn't want to ride on a big fire truck? Exactly. Well, look, I, I don't know if I'll be any help, but I would be glad to talk to him. I'd really appreciate it. No problem. Hey, uh, Sean, you know, if I do some good here, I get to ride on a big truck. You do some good here. I'll let you work the siren. You got that kind of power? Yeah, it's about the limit. Ed. Carol, hey. You got a four-way Chuck key on you? What? Four-way Chuck key. Pin set on lane six broken. Me without my four-way Chuck key. Uh, no, I just have my two-way Chuck key. Hey, look, um... Try this bad boy. All right. Ed? Yeah. Danny Martin is being charged with murder. Yeah, second degree. Well, rumor has it that you might not take the case. This is a small town, isn't it? I think you should do it. Really? Yeah, I really do. Why? Because I know you. I know if you don't take it, it'll haunt you for the rest of your life. Look, this case isn't about me, Carol. This case is about Danny Martin. If you don't do it and Danny Martin loses after Eli asked for your help, how's it going to make you feel? You can handle this case. Hudson. How's everything going? Not bad. Believe it or not, I'm still getting mileage off hijacking the PA. It's great. Yeah, but I figure in a week or two, I'm gonna have to top it. I'm gonna tear down the hallway on Harley. Uh, Ryan, I don't I'm think kidding. You know. <laughs> okay, listen, um, I had a very interesting visitor come to my office. You can't guess who it was. Senate Majority Leader Trent Lott. No. Independent filmmaker Todd Solins. Nope. Martha Stewart. Nope. Arsenio Hall. Ryan. Yeah. Your dad came to see me. Oh, come on. Listen, Ryan, he's really worried about you. Yeah, I know he's worried about me. He, he's, he's worried I'm, I'm a geek instead of a big dumb jock. And you know what? He's right. So why don't you tell him to just stop worrying about it and get over it? 
He just wants to be your pal and spend time with you. I gotta go. Ed, what the hell is going on? You're under arrest for second degree murder. Yeah, that much I heard, but why? The police have an eyewitness. Oh, this is insane. An eyewitness to what? I didn't do anything. We don't know yet. It was just an accident. A stupid, drunken accident. Why doesn't anybody believe me? We believe you, Danny. So what happens now? You'll be arraigned and you'll have to make a plea. <sighs> this can't be happening. It's gonna be okay, Danny. This is a guy with an office in a bowling alley. I'm sorry. Look, I don't mean to be a jerk, okay? But uh, I'm in serious trouble here, right? And I know Eli says you guys are great lawyers, but are you up to this? We can handle it, Danny. I hope so. Ah, uh, excuse me, sir. Captain Al Pavlik, at your service. How can I help you, darling? I'm looking for Sean Noel. Is that right? Oh, lucky Sean. Uh, hey, you got a sister? What? Hey, is her name Wilma? Because I ain't never dated a Wilma. I don't have a sister. You got any friends named Wilma? Molly! Sean! Come on in. Nice meeting you, Al. Hey, next time you bring a Wilma now. So what's up? Uh, I talked to Ryan. You did. How'd it go? Not so great. He says that you don't accept him for what he is. That's crazy. I, he says that you don't get him and that you don't want to get him. But that's exactly what I want. You know, he won't let me try. Look, I have an idea. Why don't the three of us have lunch together and I can sort of mediate between the two of you? Okay, that sounds good. I made you chili. Wow, thanks. But you know, I don't eat red meat. Oh. Oh. I'm kidding. That's all I eat. Oh. <laughs> Don't be nervous. I'm not nervous. Yes, you are. Why do you think I'm nervous? You're squeezing my leg. All rise. <clears throat> that was your leg? Uh-huh. I'm sorry, I thought it was furniture. Be seated. Mr. Daniel Martin, you are charged with murder in the second degree, in that with criminal intent you caused the death of one Jeff Dyer. How do you plead? Mr. Martin pleads not guilty, Your Honor. And we respectfully request that he be released on his own recognizance and not be required to post bail. We strenuously object, Your Honor. This is a murder two case. There's every reason to believe that if Mr. Martin is released, he is a flight risk. Mr. Martin is not a flight risk, Your Honor. He's been steadily employed by Allied Insurance for close to a decade. He's a model citizen without so much as an outstanding parking ticket on his record. Your Honor, please. I've heard enough, gentlemen. I'm setting bail at $75,000. $75,000? Believe it or not, Danny, that was a victory. Oh. <laughs> what is so funny? Every time you get ready for a date, you turn into the Tasmanian devil. Stop calling this a date. What do you want me to call it? Uh, teacher, parent, student conference. Mmm, too bulky. How about uh, TPSC? That's still hard to say. How about we pronounce it tip sack? Be quiet. Hey, what do you think of this? Pretty? I mean, too pretty? Date? Pretty? Because I, I I don't want him to think that I think that this is a date. It's pretty darn pretty. How about this? Perfect screams tip sack. Wait, isn't that what you want? Gosh, Carol, am I just being horrible? What do you mean? I'm, I'm, I'm using a student's troubles as an excuse to hit on his dad. Actually, I think the father is using his son's problems as an excuse to hit on the sexy principal lady. Okay. I'm going with the skirt. Yes. Now you listen, listen, Roger. The judge ordered the DA to get me those documents by yesterday morning, and it's now today morning. Where, where's the stuff, Roger? Where's the stuff, Roger? No, no, listen to me, okay? If I don't get, if I do not get, if you don't have time to tell your boss, if I don't get those documents that I want on my desk in 15 minutes, I will come down there myself. No, no, 15, 15 minutes, Roger. Roger that. We gotta get back. Did you check the distance from here to the window? No, I've been taking pictures. What, are you making a coffee table book? We gotta get back. It's gonna take us at least 10 hours to go through all that stuff. And then we get through going Ed, through all this at what? You can do this. 
What if I blow it? Do you really think I'd let that happen? Well, this is great. W which one of you guys does the cooking around here? Well, I made lunch, but Ryan here? This guy can really cook. Oh, yeah? What's your specialty? Frozen waffles. Mmm. So, Ryan, have you told your dad about chess club? I didn't know you were in chess club. Oh, no. He's not just in the chess club. He rules the chess club. Hey, what, what's that movie about the uh, chess prodigy? Deuce Bigelow. Uh, Searching for Bobby Fischer. It was a great movie. Yeah, we ought to rent that, all right? Look, why don't I just go get a frying pan? Excuse me? That way you guys can literally hit me over the head with it. That would be less painful than this. This police report states that Detective Johnson found Danny's handprints all over the statue's legs. Well, we're not denying he was there. And the handprints could have just as easily been made from him trying to hold it steady. What's that one? Statement from the eyewitness. She's a waitress in the restaurant. She saw Danny push the statue over. She saw him push it over? That's what it says. Is she sure it was Danny? She said she served both guys Charlie dogs. Soon after they left, there was some noise outside. She looked out the window and saw a guy in a blue flannel shirt pushing the baby Charlie mascot. No chance Danny was wearing, say, a red leotard? Afraid not. How far away was she? Oh, man. What is it? Take a look at that. Oh, Jeff Dwyer's credit card receipts, cell phone bills, a happy leprechaun motel. I, I don't get it. He was having an affair? Keep looking. Anna Martin. Danny's wife. He's married? He separated. He told me she left him four months ago. That's right when this happy leprechaun stuff started happening. And so we have? A motive. Didn't know about it. You gotta level with me, Danny. You gotta level with me. Because if you don't level with me, then we go in the courtroom, there are surprises. I cannot have surprises when we go in that courtroom. I did not know that my wife this, was having an affair with Jeff Dyer. This is Do you have any idea? Any idea at all how devastating this is to the case? The case? The case. Do you have any idea how devastating this is to me? Not only have I lost my best friend in the whole world, not only have I been charged with his murder, but now I have to process the idea that he was sleeping with my wife. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I'm... I'm sorry. Danny, I just want to make sure this doesn't go down the wrong road. Can we move on to the next question, please? Yeah, let's move on to the next question. The eyewitness is a waitress who says she saw you push over the statue. Can you think of any reason she might think that? No. She must have seen wrong. I didn't push the statue over. You did touch it, though. Your handprints are on the base. Oh, God. What? You know how I told you we used to climb the Charlie statue? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, one night after a few too many beers, Jeff wrapped his arms around the thing and started pushing it back and forth. I said, what are you doing? And he said, I'm rocking the baby. So that became another thing we used to do back then. So this time you accidentally caused it to go over? No, I wasn't even touching it when it fell. So does anyone else know about this rocking the baby thing? No, just me and Jeff. Come in. Let me guess. Quake. Nope. The Sims. Nope. Okay, I'm out. You've exhausted my knowledge of online gaming. Is it Pong? I'm kidding. I'm not that much of a dinosaur. It's called Rune Master. Oh, yeah, yeah I've heard of that. Uh, what was it you tried to do in Rune Master? Become Rune Master? Uh, and you are Odin? Look, it's a little difficult to concentrate and answer these questions at the same time. Uh, that's not how we speak to guests in our house. No, no, no. It's... it's okay. Sorry. Ms. Martin, what's your relationship with the defendant? I was married to him for six years. And now? We're separated. And when did you two separate? Four months ago. Did you leave him? Did he leave you? Or was it mutual? I left him. Why? I don't know. I guess we weren't getting along very well. Yes, you weren't getting along very well, but why did you leave him? Objection asked and answered. She said they weren't getting along. 
Sustained. Move on, Mr. Leach. Ms. Martin, were you having an affair with Jeff Dyer? Yes. And were you having an affair with Mr. Dyer when you decided to leave Danny Martin? Yes. Did you tell your husband about the affair? No, I did not. Why not? I was afraid of how he might react. Why? Is the defendant a jealous man? Ms. Martin? I guess a little bit. Isn't it true that he flew into a rage at your office Christmas party last year when your boss put his arm around you? We can get your boss up here, Ms. Martin. Yes. I have nothing further. So, Miss Martin, you never told your husband about the affair? No. So he never knew about it? Objection. Calls for speculation. Sustained. Did Danny ever give you any indication he knew about the affair? No. If he's as jealous a guy as the prosecution suggests, you know, flying off the handle at Christmas parties and such, wouldn't he have had great difficulty in keeping such a thing to himself? I would think so, yes. So I guess he never knew about it. Objection. Calls for conclusion. Withdrawn. Thank you, Miss Martin. Is that good? That was good. It felt good. Molly? Hey, Sean, come on in. I got your message. Now, what's the great idea? Pull up a chair, fireman. Okay. Okay. Um, give me a name. Something mythic. What? Mythic? Yeah, you know, like uh, Xanthazar. All right. Okay, I got one. Xanthazar. Yeah, <laughs> very funny. Well, here's my plan. You are going to play Rune Master. I'm going to play Rune Master? Yeah. Yeah, you're going to create your own band of settlers with my help, of course, and then you're going to enter the world of Rune Master, and you're going to look for... Runes. No, no, Ryan. Ryan, I mean, he won't even know who you are. You can talk to him in his world on his terms. You know, forge some common ground. That's genius. I know. This guy wants to trade amulets for the key. Is he insane? Or just perverse? What's a reasonable number of amulets to ask for? I don't know, like four. Really? I was thinking like 1,200. <laughs> Good one. How about 10? Yes! I got the key for 10 amulets! <gasps> Thank you, and farewell, Elrich. <laughs> farewell, Odin. All right, well, that was a start. Well, now I have something to talk to him about. <laughs> Thanks, Molly. My pleasure. Ms. Kolchak, how much time would you say transpired between Mr. Martin shaking the statue and the statue falling? It's maybe five or ten minutes. And according to the reservation register, Baby Charlie's hosted four birthday parties that night. Did you wait on any of those? Yeah, <laughs> two at once. I had a party of eight and a party of 14. Oh, right, the, uh, the Gaydosh party and the Madden party, they began at 8 o'clock and 8.30. Do you recall what time Mr. Martin and Mr. Dyer went out to the statue? Yeah, I do. It was just before nine. So when you were watching Mr. Martin push the statue, you were also taking care of two birthday parties, and it says six other tables? Yeah, I had eight tables. It's the dog pound. That's what we call that section. So, Ms. Kolchak, even though you saw Mr. Martin push the statue, even though you saw the statue fall, is it possible that because of the business of taking care of two birthday parties and those other tables, Mr. Martin wasn't actually pushing the statue at the moment it fell? Objection. He's leading her. I'm going to allow this. Please answer the question, Ms. Kolchik. Is it possible? Sure, it's possible that at that exact moment a tornado swept through and knocked the whole thing over, but I saw what I saw, and he was pushing it, and then it fell. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where are mine amulets? What? 
I seek thine golden pendants, ten in number. Dead. Ten magical brooches that shall provide me with infinite wellness, as agreed upon in our covenant. Dad, what are you doing? I'm not Dad. I am Elrich the Elder. And soon I shall be your rune master. <laughs> oh my god. Elrich the Elder is your dad? The key to Futhark's gate may be yours, Odin. Dad, stop. Hey, Ryan, uh, I think we're gonna take off. All right. Talk to you guys later. You know, Leech is gonna have a field day with Danny on the stand tomorrow. I know. That rock and the baby stuff is gonna be very hard to swallow. Yeah, but if I don't put him on the stand, we're left with the waitress saying she saw him shaking the statue without any explanation as to why. You have to take the chance. Yeah, I know. Hey, man. Hey, everything is locked up. All right, Eli, thanks. Good night. Good night, Eli. Hey, Eli, you sure you never heard of Rock and the Baby? Nah, man, that was Jeff's and Danny's day. Hey, Ed. I just want to say thanks for taking care of my boy. I'm trying, Eli. You'll do it. <clears throat> Nineteen eighty nine, Eastern Conference Finals. Cleveland Cavaliers versus the Chicago Bulls. Fifth and final game of the series. Cleveland leads 199 with three seconds to play. Michael Jordan gets the ball. He dribbles towards the key. He pulls up inside the circle. Craig Elo jumps up to block him, but Jordan just sort of hangs there in midair until Elo floats by. Then he releases the sweetest jumper you ever saw. Bulls 101, Cavs 100. It's known as the shot. I'm aware of it. That's right. You know what Michael Jordan said he thought about when he got the ball? What? Nothing. He just did it the same way he did it the other million and a half times in his life. No thinking. I'm glad you're here, Frankie. Me too. Rocking the baby. Now, are you sure you want to give that as the reason you were pushing over that statue? Ob objection. Objection on so, on so many levels I can't even count them. Sustained. Mr. Leach, behave. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Please, help me out here, Mr. Martin. The reason that Jeff Dyer was climbing this statue of baby Charlie was because it was an old high school tradition. That's correct. And the reason that you were seen shoving that statue was... Your Honor, he already answered that was also a high school tradition. I just want to make sure we get all these old high school traditions straight. Now tell me, Mr. Martin, are there any other high school traditions that we need to know about? No, sir. What about the high school tradition of killing your best friend for stealing your wife? Your Honor. Mr. Leach, that right there was the penultimate straw. You don't want to get to the last straw. Last question. Is there anyone on God's green earth who can corroborate your claim that shaking that statue was an old high school tradition called rocking the baby? Only me and Jeff knew about it. Exactly. Nothing further. Mr. Martin, I know this is a difficult time for you, losing your best friend, learning that your wife had been unfaithful. So Objection! Be what straw is he on? Let's get to it, Mr. Stevens. Three questions. One, did you know your wife was having an affair with Jeff Dyer? No, I did not. Two, were your hands on the statue when it toppled? No. It fell because Jeff climbed out to the end. And three, did you murder Jeff Dyer? Jeff Dyer moved into my neighborhood when he was 11 years old. He had these big meaty hands and was a good two heads taller than all the other kids. And the first day, he comes over to me and my friend Eli over there and he says, uh, you guys want to be friends with a big guy? And we just cracked up and said, yeah, we could use a big guy. 
And that was it. We were friends ever since. No, I didn't murder Jeff Dyer. Okay, thank you, Olga. Hey, Ryan, have a seat. I heard your encounter with the real-life Elric the Elder didn't go so well. Yeah, that's the lamest stunt he's ever pulled. I, I mean, it's one thing to be embarrassed in front of regular kids, but it's an entirely different level of shame when it's in front of your equally dorky friends. Why would he do that? It was my idea. What? Look, Brian, uh, you and I have always been honest with each other, right? Yeah. So, can I be honest with you now? Yeah. Uh, you're behaving like a horse's ass. Like your father is reaching out to you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He's invited you down to the firehouse a million times. You don't go. He, he learns how to play rune master to try and talk to you. You get angry with him. My dad does not approve of me because I'm not Mr. Big Popular Jock Guy. And I can't change that. No, Ryan. You don't approve of him because he was Mr. Big Popular Jock Guy. And he can't change that. Hey, Ed. Carl, hey. Wow, that's some serious furring of the brownie pack going on there. You okay? Yeah, just polishing my clothes. We're due back in a couple hours. Hmm. I'm putting my money on you. Really? Not a lot of money, no. <laughs> I'm kidding. You're gonna be fine. It's funny, you know, you become a lawyer, you never think you're actually gonna try a murder case, and here I am. I lose, and isn't man's convicted of murder. But you are the smartest bowling alley lawyer in the world. That's comforting. <laughs> oh, this right here? This is old Mr. Washington, the Reverend Henry S. Washington, Jr. He was a clergyman? Oh, no, nah, he was our math teacher that used to talk like a preacher. <laughs> it is not your aptitude, but your attitude that will determine your altitude with a little intestinal fortitude. Oh, he was the worst math teacher we had. Oh, my God, is that you with Jeff and Danny? Yeah. He looks so cute. Oh, yeah, that's the boys right there. We should just hang out in the quads, just scheming on the girls right before lunch, just figuring out our plan of attack. Oh, my God. Eli, I'm sorry, can I, can I borrow this just for a sec? Yeah, no problem. What's going on? I'll tell you in a sec. Carol, hi. Hi. Where'd you get those mittens? I want those mittens. Oh, well, that could happen if you play your cards right. And I got a present for you. Eli's high school yearbook, which also happens to be Jeff Dyer and Danny Martin's high school yearbook. Read what it says underneath his picture. Jeff, Jeff Dyer. We'll always remember. Rocking the baby with Danny. Rocking the baby with Danny. Oh, my God, this is fantastic. I know, we were looking through it, oh. and I saw it. Oh, you're amazing. I know. <laughs> 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 State your name for the court, please. Eli Cotwright Goggins III. Your Honor, I'd like to mark this 1989 Cookleton Hills yearbook as Defense Exhibit H. Your Honor, I object to the tardiness of this evidence and this witness. We already covered this, Mr. Leach. So admitted. What is this, Mr. Coggins? This is my high school yearbook. Also Danny's and Jeff's. Could you please turn to page 57 and read what it says under Jeff Dyer? Jeff Dyer will always remember Prince of Stanley, coughing with the boys, Eli's jetpack, rocking a baby with Danny, and sweet Lotta Anderson, who can make a blind man see again. Could you repeat the part right before sweet Lotta Anderson? It says uh, rocking a baby with Danny. Thank you. Nothing further. Mr. Leach? Nothing at this time. Danny Martin is a jealous man. And when Jeff Dyer stole his wife, he decided to kill him. But Danny Martin is also a smart man. So he didn't use a gun. He didn't use a knife in a dark alley somewhere. He did it in front of everybody by convincing Jeff Dyer 
to climb up the statue of a giant baby and push it over. The story is almost so comical, it, it can't be murder, right? Wrong. So what if climbing up the statue of baby Charlie and rocking it were once high school traditions? Then they were traditions. But on that Wednesday night, they were weapons. Thank you. You know how when you eat a ring-ding, the chocolate outside is fine, but what you really want is the creamy, delicious center? Well, in closing arguments, folks, you know what the creamy, delicious center is? Evidence. So what the prosecution just gave you was the chocolate outside. No mention of the eyewitness. Why? Because her testimony was unreliable. No mention of how Danny Martin knew about his wife's affair. Why? Because there is no evidence that Danny Martin did know about his wife's affair. Now, in this case, the prosecution gave only one piece of evidence that Danny Martin shook the statue at some point. So what did we do? We gave you the yearbook, which is evidence that explains why. Let me put this clearly. There is no evidence that proves beyond a reasonable doubt that Danny Martin did kill Jeff Dyer. Thank you. Hey, where's my Wilma? You having trouble finding me a good Wilma? Oh, just a Wilma that's good enough for you, Al. Yeah, I want a good Wilma. Molly? Hey, what are you doing? Hi. Well, you know, you're always coming to my work to talk about Ryan, so I figured I'd mix it up a little and come down here. So he's speaking to you, huh? huh. Better than what I'm getting. Oh, well, uh, he has no choice. He gives me the cold shoulder, I give him detention. <laughs> Wish I had that club in my bag. Oh. You guys will figure it out. I have faith. So, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that I am owed one chilly dinner with the men of Stuckyville Hook and Ladder Company Number 7. Uh-huh. So you faked concern for me and my son just to get in my chili. Is that how it is? Can't I be concerned with you, your son, and your chili? Hey, guys! Clean up! We got a lady joining us for dinner. Madam Foreperson, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. What say you? We, the jury, in the matter of Daniel James Martin, find the defendant not guilty of murder in the second degree. Oh! Congratulations. I, I don't know what to say to you guys. <laughs> Sticking by me, man. Oh, dude. 
I wouldn't have it any other way, man. All right. All right. Yo, man. Hey, thanks, man. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hey, partner. Hey, partner. And you didn't think you could handle a murder case. Hold on now. I never said I couldn't. You were awesome today. You know what? You've been awesome all week. Thank you. Thanks for everything. Good night. Good night, Frankie. Hey, hold on. You, you forgot your bag. Oh, that's for you. I, I figured you'd be too tired to cook, so I swung by the goat. Really? That's great. I'm starving. Lovely cup of stew. It's not stew. <laughs>